Inside the evidence, tonight a first look at some of the exhibits jurors have seen in R. Kelly's racketeering and sex crimes trial. Phone messages sent to the singer, the McDonald's where Kelly allegedly met some of his victims, and the singer's Chicago suburban mansion where prosecutors say teen girls and young women were held against their will. As an attorney who's come to know uh, several of his victims, uh, this is a this trial is, is serious for us. This is an opportunity. Uh, to see him finally held accountable for his many crimes over the years. Friday afternoon, a supervisor from the Cook County Clerk's Office in Chicago took the stand. She explained for the jury details of R. Kelly and Aaliyah's 1994 marriage certificate. The two singers were wed when Aaliyah was 15 and Kelly was 27, but their marriage license application stated Aaliyah was 18. Federal prosecutors argue Kelly bribed a clerk to accept a fake ID. The jury will also soon hear the story of Faith Rogers. Embarrassed, um, violated, confused, because the person that entered the bedroom wasn't the person that I was texting. He became a different person. In 2018, PIX11 was there when Faith Rogers went to police on Long Island. She filed a report saying Kelly recorded them having sex without her consent and knowingly gave her an STD. Lee Merritt is Rogers' attorney. We are hopeful, uh, but we're a bit trepidatious because the legal system has failed to hold Mr. Kelly uh, accountable before. Chicago, Illinois, 2008, R. Kelly was acquitted in a child pornography charge and a child pornography case. And over the years, Kelly has vehemently denied all of the criminal charges filed against him. Reporting live outside the federal courthouse in downtown Brooklyn, Ayanna Harry, PIX11 News.